So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the not so obvious photo settings for your flying camera. Depth to focus might be pointless. I will show you how high the ISO can be. Can any filters destroy your image? Should you use bracketing or HDR? What is the longest shutter speed the drone can handle? What are the best apps to plan your shoot? How to use the whole sensor for maximum image quality? And way more. Yeah, yeah, I'm Manry. In this channel, I help with the tech tools to be creative. And today, you know very well what we're talking about. Let me put this down. So as usual, we're very organized and the video is split in chapters. So if you want to see something specific, you can go directly there. But I bet you're going to find some things interesting all along the way. So let's kick off with some easier stuff and we get more advanced as we go. Okay. So first of all, settings on the screen. Shutter, ISO, EV, all menu. You don't want the drone moving stuff around without telling you. Here you've got the option to do a single shot or burst mode. And burst mode can go up to seven shots. We can be really useful if you're shooting something that is in movement, fast movement, and you're closer to it. Then let's hop inside the menu and do the polarizing choice of shooting RAW plus JPEG. It's just a waste of space. JPEG, I'm gonna have to edit everything. Whoa, let's just prove if there's any difference, shall we? So here we got same shot, RAW and JPEG, and they look incredibly the, the same. same. Wait, Padawan, let's edit them a bit. All right, so after playing around a little bit with contrast and colors, they look basically the same. But if you zoom in, this is what you see. Just forget JPEGs. So this test proves two things, each good for one side of the battle. The initial JPEGs are very good, and to share them quickly, they are a very good option. Now if you want to edit later, definitely the RAW is the better choice. So that's why my recommendation here is to just upgrade the size of your SD card and shoot both things. These are how many shots you can get with 32, 64, and 128 gigabytes SD card. Another setting you're gonna find is the format, to shoot 4x3 and no, 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 no. I'm the editor and it's not 4x3, but it's 3x2. I'm just going to signal on screen something whenever he says it again. Sorry for the interruption, back with the video. Or 16 by 9, Oop. but in this one you're gonna have to pay attention with the borders. If you shoot 16 by 9 it's already gonna come cropped and you cannot do anything with it later. If you choose 4 by 3 you can still do the 16 by 9 crop and in this way you can reframe it the way that you want. Okay, so we're inside Lightroom here and we're gonna show you both shots. This is the first one which is 3 by 2 and you can see that the dimensions are 5472 by 3648. And doing the maths, this results exactly in 20 megapixels. If we go to the second shot, 5464 by 3070. 16 megapixels, and I'm going crazy here, going to another shot. Now go back here. The shot was cut around these leaves over here, and here we still have all that part. So really, it's just being cut in camera. So in this case, I don't see any reason to shoot 16 by nine. I would just go with the four by three and be happy. Now white balance in auto or manual? Manual. Auto. Whoa, calm down you two. Okay, so auto white balance for photo is usually pretty okay. I wouldn't recommend it though for video, but we're not talking about that today. Less talking and more showing. Let's check it in Lightroom. Okay, so now with the white balance, this is the one in automatic and it looks like the drone did a pretty good job. So if I click on a grayish part here, for example, here. If I grab it here, let's see if it changes something. But if we compare both of them now, they look very, very similar. So between what the camera decides and what Lightroom thinks would be the correct white balance, the difference is very minimal, meaning that the drone is doing a pretty good job. But what if it misses entirely? Can we still fix it? Let's see. So I'm just gonna grab it here, I'm gonna click in the same place as before, and... Wow. This was the DNG, let's see the JPEG. I'm just going to do the same, grab it here. Mm, one zero to the raw file. Now panoramas are a very cool way in which the drone is going to turn around for you and stitch different pictures together to form a much wider shot. You can use the automated mode or you can do it manually by just taking different shots and then merging them together later in post-production. But one thing to notice here is that the drone is going to choose how much of a coincidence you're going to have between pictures. And usually I think it exaggerates a little bit too much, meaning that in the end the picture is much more warped than I would like it to be. So I usually prefer to do it myself. I'll let the drone hover in place and I'm just going to turn around and have about 25 to 30% coincidence between pictures. Let's see if there's any difference. So you can see especially in the corners of the image how much more warped the buildings are. What is the maximum ISO you can use with a drone? Now this relates directly to the sensor size. So bigger drones with bigger sensors are gonna be more capable of handling higher ISOs than smaller ones. But the limit is always going to be something more personal. Check out these shots in which the ISO is just going up and up and you can see each time a little bit more noise. 
Now I consider for myself that 400 is kind of the limit. Above that, the image begins to be a little bit blurrier, softer, the colors begin to fall apart a little bit. But maybe for you 800 or even more is still fine. Remembering that in post-production we can still reduce the effect of these, but always at the cost of sharpness. I'm gonna leave most of the example shots you're gonna see throughout this video in a link in the description below. So if you want to download them and really pixel peep it, you're free to do so. Now to focus on something on the drone is almost like using a smartphone. You're just going to tap on the screen to make it focus on that place. But is it really necessary and should you worry about where you're tapping? So let's take a step back and think where we are. With the Air 2S, you have an equivalent of a 22mm lens with a 2.8 aperture. Which means you're gonna need a lot of separation from subject to background so that something is out of focus. Let me show you. Here I'm one meter away from the drone and you can definitely see a difference. And this is 10 meters away. You can still notice something, but it's a bit more difficult. Now doing some very advanced calculations, we can discover that after 16 meters, everything is going to be acceptably sharp. So this means the closer you are to the subject, the more it means some. So the answer is yes, but depending on the distance. We've talked about this app before here on the channel called Photopuse. You can check the dedicated video up here and the screen over there. It's a paid app, stop being cheap, it's really worth it. And you can calculate everything with this app. You can check the field of view, you can check the depth of field, you can plan according to the stars, where you want to shoot. Just check it out. This brings us to shooting out of focus or manual focus. And I would go for out of focus all the way, especially because you can still do sort of a manual focus by tapping on the screen. But if you want to be really precise or you're having difficulties seeing the screen because it's too bright, for example, you can just tap this button over here and then when you slide up and down, you're going to change the focus. But to make it even more visible, you can go inside the menu and you can activate the focus peaking. It's going to have a more accentuated color where the focus is really strong and it's going to fade out together with the focus itself. Now there's this option called Smart Mode, and in this one, the drone is just going to do its best to calculate what it needs to do to have the best exposure, the best image possible. Maybe even joining some different exposures doing some sort of HDR image. Now the other option, and a little bit more advanced, is using AEB, Auto Exposure Bracketing. And then merging these shots in whatever software you prefer. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, you have a big chance today. By clicking the subscribe and the bell, a card is going to appear up here for you to see a video exactly about how to merge these photos on Lightroom or Luminar Neo. Okay, so let's check this smart mode against the three exposures bracket. So I'm inside Lightroom, I'm just gonna choose all the DNGs, I'm going to right click, I'm gonna go to Photo Merge, HDR. Now the one on the left is the merge of the three RAWs that I took with the bracketing option. And the one on the right is the one using the smart mode on the drone. And I have to admit that the smart mode did a pretty good job actually. I just applied the preset and tweaked a little bit and probably I could make it look a little bit closer to the smart mode. But what matters right now is to understand that with the three exposures bracketing, you have a lot of room to edit. But actually, if you want to take a smart mode shot to have a reference or something to share quickly, I'm quite impressed with how well the drone managed this one. Okay, so now your camera is up in the air and shaking like crazy with the wind. How long of a shutter can you use with this? Now to do a very scientific test about it is a little bit difficult because I cannot control how the wind is going to blow at each moment during the test. But for the sake of having an idea, let's go from 1 to 150, that's how you say it, of a second and down to see how far can we go. Remembering that the maximum time that this can expose for a picture is 8 seconds. It's Sunday morning, 6 a.m. and I'm out to do again a couple of tests for this video because I wasn't satisfied with the results. So this is a very good moment for you guys to show your love and like this video. So this actually looks much brighter than it actually was. With the 32 and the diffuser, I managed to get shots between 1 second and 1 160th of a second. There was almost no wind, so perfect conditions to make this test. And for me the result was that the images looked just as sharp. And here you can see a comparison of a shot using a 1 second shutter to keep the ISO at 100, and the other one to be sure that you don't have motion blur at 1 80th of a second, but with ISO 6400. And for my taste, and I think probably you're gonna choose the same, I'd much rather have the one second shot much crispier and sharper than having the blotchy high ISO image. And these shots are from another day in which we had moderate wind. And on this day I have some 4 seconds exposures that were all blurry, but also these ones at 1.3 in which some were blurry and some were very sharp. So I totally recommend you use burst mode to be sure that at least one shot you're gonna be able to get right. So this test showed me how good the stabilization of these drones is. Now what about the opposite? How high can the shutter go? And if you use any filters to control the light, does it change something? 
Now, ND diffusers not only control for the light, but sometimes they can help a little bit with glare, contrast, saturation, and other times they can induce colors that weren't there before. So let's test it. I did roughly the same shots by cranking up the shutter speed or using the ND diffusers. So here I had the drone still so that I could have the same framing and I could change the ND diffusers really quickly so that the changes in the environment wouldn't affect the test. I began with the ND32 and worked my way down to the 16, 8, 4 and no filters. And basically what I discovered was that regarding sharpness, saturation and contrast, I didn't see major changes, but I did see a color shift. So from without filter until the ND16, I noticed that the pictures from the DJI Air 2S tend to be a little bit greenish. Very easy to correct in post-production. And then with the ND32 I noticed something quite funny. Actually, the picture looked better because the filter induced a little bit of magenta. And as you can see, one compensated for the other and the image just looked really nice. I don't know if it's a characteristic of the filters that come with the Air 2S or it's specifically mine that has this. Let me know in the comments if you noticed this in yours too. Alright, mission accomplished. Back to the editing room. Now the next three tips can be called pre-flight tips because there are some things that you don't want to discover after you've taken off already. Two are apps to use. First is the DJI Fly app itself. And if you click over here, you can actually open a map in which you're going to be able to see wherever you can fly and what are the rules in that place. And this is exactly the map that the drone is going to control whenever you're going to fly. So if it's a red zone or an authorization zone, it's going to ask you for the permit there. And some of the things like, for example, asking for authorization have to be done on the DJI website and you have to upload the documents that authorize you to fly in that place. But the confirmation might take even a day or two. So this is going to help you avoid going there and trying to fly for nothing or preparing yourself in advance. Now, if you discover that you can actually fly there, I really like to use the Google Earth app to fly around a little bit and take a look what are the cool viewpoints and angles that I can use. And if you want to go extra nerd, you can use the desktop app so that you can see where the sun is going to be at that specific time. Done that, you have to check the three or things that we always forget about, which is SD card, ND filters, and battery level. It's so annoying when you're off the ground and then you realize that you have to come back because you missed one of these. Now regarding the SD card, at least some of the drones like the Mini 3 or the Air 2S have internal storage, so it can save you, but it's a much more limited one with only eight gigabytes. Don't forget that your aircraft is giving you all the information up here. How many GPS satellites you're connected to? How is the connection between the controller and the drone? And also, how is the battery status? Go shoot whatever's farther away first. If you suffer from FCA, flying camera anxiety, even more. The brain just tends to block everything when the battery level is about to hit the automatic return to home and you're still three kilometers away over the sea. So just go do whatever's farthest away and work your way back. On the menu, you're also going to find two other overlays that can be super useful for your shots. One is the histogram and the other is the overexposure warning. The histogram is gonna tell you how is the luminosity across your image. And it's really going to change depending on what time of the day you're shooting and what kind of subject. But after you use it to it, it gives you a very good idea if you're under or overexposing a little bit the image. The overexposure warning is a little bit more visual on the image itself. So you're going to begin seeing this zebra-like thing, whatever is brighter on the image. This is going to signal to you if there's something that is going to be too bright that you need to take care of. If you discover that lowering the exposure to disappear with the zebras means that the darker parts are too dark, maybe this is the moment to do an HDR image, for example. But I wanted to test how much of an overexposed image can we still bring back. So let's check it on Lightroom. Let's see until which picture can we still manage to recover the highlights. And to make it easier to understand, I'm just gonna press J on the keyboard so that everything that is blown out is going to be in red. So I'm just gonna push it down here on the highlights until everything disappears. A little worse, but we can still save it. It's getting very critical. Let me go down. This is so blown out. Yeah, most definitely. By this point, look at this part over here. All the texture from the ground is gone. From the fifth picture on, there's already a lot of information lost. Let's just see what we can recover from the last one. Exposure. It's just a mess. Now, if you got any value from this video, please consider leaving a like. And if you have any doubts or questions, just pop them in the comment section below. I answer absolutely everyone. And for more cool content, just go check out this video over here, where I tell you all the best video settings for your DJI drone. Oh, it's not a link yet. Wait. Okay, now it is. And as for me, I'm out of here. So I'll see you over there. Bye. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Ciao, ciao.